Hey book nerds, it's Sarah and welcome back to my channel. I'm very excited for today's video because I just finished school. My campus is right next to a bookstore, so I thought that I would go book shopping and I would take you guys along with me. There are a couple of new releases that I have on my radar that I want to pick up. I'm also going to be walking around browsing the shelves to see what appeals to me and I'm taking you guys along with me. So this is going to be a book shopping vlog and at the end I will do a book haul for you guys. So I'm very very excited. I'm going to stop talking. Let's go book shopping. Get yourself a tall friend that looks at which book is the nicest for you. Because <laughs> I can definitely not reach that top shelf. Short girl life. We're doing some serious damage here. Like, look at that. <laughs> Amira, are we sorry? No, not at all. <laughs> so how are you feeling about this? I'm questioning my life choices right now, but like, these all look so good. They're all books that I've wanted, so I don't know, but you're a bad influence on me, so. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm I mean, really like, good. this is your pile, so I mean, we're pretty oh, easy. easy. So my cart is full and um, yeah, we made some damage here. Um, we're gonna go pay for the books and I'll show them to you either at home or in my car. But yeah, we had a lot of fun. So I can't wait to show you guys all of these books that we bought and I can't wait to read them too. So 
So what are we going to do, Sarah? We're going to another Indigo because the one that we went to didn't have Daisy Darker and that was like the one book that I wanted <laughs> and I got like everything else except for that. So we're going to another Indigo where they have it in stock and hopefully we can get there before it closes because we're like stuck in a little bit of traffic right now. But we're driving a half hour to go to another Indigo because that's how committed I am exactly. to getting the books that I want. <laughs> so let's go book hunting guys. had to do two bookstores to get it but it's in my hands I have it why is this so dark my exposure today for the videos is all over the place so sorry if there are clips that are darker than the others it's because like I keep going outside inside outside inside so it's fucking with my camera but uh, anyways Daisy Darker finally have it Yay! So we all know that I came here for this, right? But then I saw the collector's edition of A Darker Shade of Magic that matches the second one that I have for um, A Gathering of Shadows. And I'm like, uh, should I buy this? I already spent a lot of money on books today. So should I get this? Definitely. Should I get this? Go for it. <laughs> I'm all for spending money. Should I buy this? Yes. <laughs> buy everything, please. Should I buy this? Yes! They have the first one here. They didn't have Lovely. it at the other Indigo that we went to. And I'm like debating life choices right now. Should I buy this? Yes. <laughs> they have bad influences on each other. Very bad influences. So I just found the funniest book series ever and I'm gonna show it to you. So first we have the girl who could move with her mind. Then we have random flying through the air. Then we have eye of the Storm, and last but not least, we have a load of crazy powers. Amira and I are laughing our asses off at this. It's so funny, and just because the titles are hilarious, I'm going to check them out on Goodreads and possibly add them to my TBR. That was a really cool shot, but did I almost just fall while getting off of the escalator because I was filming? Yes. Would I have looked ridiculous? Also yes. Would she have laughed at me? Yes. Also yes. <laughs>
All right, so it's much later in the evening and I am home now, so I thought that I would sit down and show you guys all of the books that I got. I bought so many books, you guys. I bought way more than I intended to, but I did get some good deals on the books that I got. A few of them already had discounts, and since I'm a Plum Plus member, I have an added discount on top of it. And today I had an extra 10% discount on top of my 10% that I already have with my membership. I didn't count how many books that I got but we're going to see together I guess so I have the bag right here it's pretty heavy and pretty full so I'm just going to empty it out and then I'll get right to showing you guys the books that I got so I ended up getting 11 books but I'm only going to show nine of them to you in this video because the two other ones are for a secret TBR video that you guys will see probably in a couple of weeks so I'm not going to show you guys the books in any particular order I'm just going to grab them off the stack that I have next to me so the first one that I am picking up is The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson this book is Tiffany D. Jackson's most recent release and it's a carry retelling that's all I needed to know I don't want to know too much about it because I don't want to be spoiled for like her take on Carrie by Stephen King. So the story happens in a small town, it happens on prom night, there might be a murder, but anyways it's a Carrie retelling so I am all for it. And I know Tiffany D. Jackson writes a lot of fantasy or or actually I think she wrote like one paranormal fantasy but she wrote some contemporary as well and I think this is her first take on like something that's a little more thriller-esque so I'm very excited to read this. The next book that I have here is The Change by Kirsten Miller. So I think this book is some kind of adult speculative fantasy or it might be a little on the dystopian side. All I know is that when women reach menopause they go through a sort of metamorphosis and gain powers. I think one of our main characters hears voices from the dead and I think another of our main characters something has changed physically for them. So I'm not quite sure of the details but I do know that when this group of women hit menopause they go through a change obviously and I'm guessing this book is going to follow their experience with this change so I'm very excited to read this and my friend actually picked herself up a coffee as well so we're actually going to be buddy reading this and I'm so excited I cannot wait the next book that I have here is All of Our Demise by Amanda Foodie and Christine Lynn Herman. So this is the sequel to All of Us Villains or All of Our Villains. This is a duology, so this is the conclusion to that duology. I haven't read the first book because I was waiting for this to come out and now that it has I'll be able to binge them back to back. I know it's some sort of like dark academia setting so I'm very intrigued. I don't know much about this other than that. The only other thing that I know about this duology or rather the first book is that the reviews are very very mixed they're very 50 50 I feel like some people love it and some people absolutely hate it so I don't know which side of the spectrum I will be on but if it's dark academia I'm pretty sure I'm going to love it to some extent it might not be a five star but at least I'm going to enjoy it somewhat the next book that I have here is Babel by R.F. Quang. So this is R.F. Quang's most recent release. It's an adult fantasy and it's dark academia. So our main character has been training his whole life in arts languages in order to prepare themselves for their entry in the prestigious Oxford Academy, I think it's called, where it's basically a place where people go to learn the art of translation and that school is also known as Babel. So this sounds like a very intricate fantasy and I'm very excited to read it. Olivia by Olivia Reads a Latte recently read this and loved it. This is going to be my first experience reading an adult fantasy because I'm going to be honest, the genre scares the heck out of me. Brandon Sanderson, I'm looking at you. I feel like adult fantasy series need a lot of brain power and a lot of commitment. However, Babel is a standalone, so I am much more willing to start off in the genre with this. And it's just a little over 500 pages, so I feel like it shouldn't be too bad. But I know I am going to take my time to read this because it's an adult fantasy and it's my first one. I just want to make sure that I don't forget anything important and that I pay special attention to like the magic system if there is one and like the academic setting and all of that stuff. 
The next book that I have here is Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister. So this is a recent thriller release. It's also a Reese's book club pick. So Reese Witherspoon has her own book club and it gets marked with like this little sigil that you see here. So the tagline on the cover kind of best explains the premise of this book. It says, how do you stop a murder after it's already happened? So this book really reminds me of The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, where our main character is kind of placed in a loop until he can figure out who killed Evelyn Hardcastle. I feel like this is going to be in the same vein as that. So I just quickly read the back and it's exactly that. So our main character sees her son murder someone, her innocent sweet. 17 year old son and after she sees the murder happen she wakes up and it's yesterday so before the murder has happened and our main character is trying to prevent this murder from happening and I'm guessing she's going to relive the same day until she manages to do so so I'm very excited for this because I absolutely adored the seven deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle it's one of my favorite books of all time and I absolutely loved how Stuart Turton beautifully wrote the story so I'm hoping wrong place wrong time is going to be as good as that and hopefully the whole non-linear time frame thing is going to be well done in here because I feel like if it's not then the book can become really confusing so this is the next book that I picked up the next book that I have here is Nothing More to Tell by Karen McManus. So this is Karen McManus's most recent release and I was very surprised for it to be released this early. I feel like Karen McManus's books always come out towards the end of the year, but I'm happy to have this in my hands now. Karen McManus is definitely an auto buy author for me. Anything that she publishes I will purchase without hesitation and I don't even have to read the synopsis to purchase it. All of her books were at least 3.5 to 4 star ratings for me and I think One of Us is Lying was rated like 4.5. So I very much enjoy her stories and I really like her writing. I feel like it's really easy to read and you breeze through the book really quickly. So with nothing more to tell, I feel like Karen McManus is going back to her roots. This book takes place in a school setting once again, like One of Us is Lying. And I'm pretty sure, like in One of Us is Lying, we follow a cast of characters that are students at the school. And I think this time one of the professors ends up dead. So this is going to be a very interesting read because I very much enjoyed One of Us is Lying. And if this is kind of very similar to the idea of that, I'm pretty sure I'm going to enjoy this. The next book that I have here is one that I'm very excited to show you and I'm also a little nervous to read it because it's something that's a bit out of my genre comfort zone but that book is The Coldest Touch by Isabel Sterling. So we have our two main characters Claire and Elise. So Claire is a vampire and Elise has this special gift where she can tell when a person is going to die and these two fall in love and since our main character Claire was turned into a vampire when she was 17 the other vampires say that she is the one who is the closest to being a human so she's still very in tune with her human emotions and since she's towards like the end of her puberty all of those emotions that we experience in that time are heightened for her this concept sounds so interesting it's a paranormal romance and it's gay i cannot wait to read this i have been eyeing this for so long. Every single time I go to Indigo, I walk past it and I'm like, uh, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy it. But after recently reading This May End Badly and subsequently wanting to read more romance, I thought, you know, why the heck not? So I purchased this and I'm so very excited to read it. So the last two books that I have here, I picked up at the second Indigo that I went to. I went there originally for one book, but I stumbled upon a second one and I could not leave it there. So I'm going to show you the those in just a second. The first book that I went to the second Indigo for was Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. So this is Alice Feeney's most recent release and I've read a couple of her books recently over the past few weeks. I think just before I made my comeback to YouTube and I very much enjoyed them. And this most recent release is a spin on Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None. Recently I feel like there have been a lot of authors who have taken that story by Agatha Christie and tried to adapt it kind of in their own style. The book that I can think of off the top of my head that recently did this is Nine Lives by Peter Swanson and that book was, I mean, it was okay, it was entertaining, but it wasn't really anything innovative to that original story. 
I have heard that Daisy Darker is so much better than Nine Lives and that the way that Alice Feeney has kind of put her own twist on Agatha Christie's story is very interesting. So I cannot wait to read this and it's probably going to be one of my reads this fall. And finally, I'm saving the best for last because you guys, I am freaking out over this book, okay? So the one that I ended up buying last and that was a complete surprise to me is Light Lark by Alex Astor. So this book was on my radar already, but I wasn't planning on picking it up. However, this is the Indigo Exclusive Edition, and I was like, okay, like most Indigo Exclusive Editions don't have anything special about them. They just have like a few extra chapters at the end, but oh my gosh, you guys, like you're not even ready for this, okay? So I'm going to show you what is special about this edition. Can we just appreciate what the book looks like? naked? Like this is the type of thing you'd get in like a fairy loot box or something. But no, it's an indigo exclusive edition and it is gorgeous. I am obsessed with the naked book and I just, I can't. I'm freaking out over how gorgeous this is. So I was already interested in Light Lark. I was eventually going to pick it up, but this was the selling point for me to pick it up today just because I mean, I mean, come on, come on. So anyways, I'm going to rein the fangirling in a little bit to talk about what this book is about. So Light Lark is a story that's kind of in the same vein as The Hunger Games. So every 100 years, people from various nations group up for a deadly game. And that's all I need to know. If there is a deadly game in the synopsis or in the premise of a book, it's an automatic add to my TBR and it's an automatic add to cart. I cannot wait to read this and I am obsessed with the edition I got. So there you have it. These are all of the books that I picked up today during my book shopping spree. I had so much fun shopping with my friend and we were terrible influences on each other. But I mean, we should all have a friend that enables our book buying addiction. It's good for the soul, okay? If you guys saw me mention one of your favorites, let me know in the comments down below so I can kind of figure out in which order I should read these in. Also, let me know in the comments down below if you guys bought any books recently and what they were. I would be very interested to know. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me on my book shopping journey today. I hope you guys had fun watching. If you did, please let me know by giving the video a big thumbs up. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you guys never miss a future upload of mine. Once again, thank you all so, so much for watching. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye, book nerds!